St. Louis architect Isaac S. Taylor, who's also known for the Jefferson Memorial and the Municipal Courts buildings in St. Louis, designed this Romanesque revival-style hotel in 1889. He was also chairman of the Commission of Architects from 1901 to 1904 for the Louisiana Purchase Exposition Centennial at the St. Louis World's Fair. The Newcomb Hotel is divided into 11 overnight rooms, five weekly rooms, 63 apartments, and 31 storage rooms. The first story, entirely of rock-faced rubble, iron, and glass plates, while the upper four stories are pressed brick and native stone. White limestone and cherry red brick were used for the outside, while the lobby was trimmed with native cherry and walnut woodwork. The lobby floors were constructed of marble, and the ballroom was the scene of important social events in Quincy during its time. Originally, an open porch surmounted by a balustrade fronted the park side, and the corner boasted a magnificent tin dome. The center of the main lobby also had an elegant marble stairway with a wrought brass balustrade. Although some of these features have long disappeared, the building still maintains its grandeur. The hotel was built on the site of the nationally known Quincy House, using the west foundation of the original structure and the original limestone wall on the 4th Street elevation. A drinking fountain and a plaque was placed in the lobby commemorating the Quincy House with the dates 1837 and 1888. The Quincy House had opened on November 8, 1838, but it was destroyed by a fire in 1883 at a loss of approximately $15,000. After the fire, a brick building was erected on the spot to be used as a roller rink and park theater. In the spring of 1887, the roller rink building was sold. Due to the almost universal desire of the citizens of Quincy, a group of men began to plan the creation of a new hotel. The group became the Quincy Hotel Corporation and was composed of Richard F. Newcomb, President, William B. Bull, Vice President, and other prestigious businessmen of Quincy. They called on architect I.S. Taylor to draw plans for a hotel that cost about $140,000. However, by the time that the building was completed, that cost had gone up to $175,000. Work on the building began in 1888. It was finished by the end of February 1889. The grand opening was held on March 5, 1889 with lights on in every room of the hotel. The program included a reception, supper, and a ball. Large as the building was, it was almost filled to capacity. 600 guests from Quincy and neighboring states responded to the printed invitations, and several hundred more attended. The doors opened at 8 p.m. with the Nolan Olker Orchestra playing music during the elaborate dinner that cost only $3 a person. Because of the opening held on the same day as the inauguration of Benjamin Harrison as president, they held an inaugural ball from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. The Quincy newspapers were lavish with their praise of the hotel, saying the formal opening of the new hotel last night marked the consummation of one of the grandest enterprises ever undertaken by the people of Quincy. At the peak of the hotel's existence, many traveling men considered it the finest hotel in the state outside Chicago. The hotel had only the best accommodations at a rate of $2.50 to $3.50 per day. For ease of the customers, it had a hotel drugstore and a barbershop and a pool room with a bar. All rooms were large and equipped with every possible convenience. That included a telephone, hot and cold running water throughout the hotel. The linen was ordered from Germany and inscribed with the name Hotel Newcomb. And according to the Quincy newspaper, the entire hotel had a home-like atmosphere that made it irresistible to the tired and the jaded traveler. However, in 1904, the hotel suffered a major fire with two women employees that lost their lives and others that were seriously hurt. A crowd gathered under the windows watching the flames as the women employees jumped or fell from the windows. Many years later, the hotel has now fallen into disrepair. Richard Newcomb, one of Quincy's most successful industrialists, invested his own money freely and was essential in the erection of a new hotel. He headed the group of businessmen who formed the Quincy Hotel Corporation and overlooked the construction of the hotel. He bought 123 shares of stock in the company at $100 each, making him the heaviest stockholder. As president of the company, he also gave half his time for more than a year to the establishment of the hotel. It was largely through Newcomb's efforts that the new hotel was erected, and for that reason it received his name. Mr. Newcomb objected to this, but the name stuck and the lessees adopted it. Newcomb inspired others to assist in the improvements on the intersection of 4th and Main. The Grand Hotel building, the Newcomb, will memorialize his character. And not only this, he also made the public library possible by purchasing the lot, then turning it over to the library board at less than cost. 
He was also president of the Mulliner Box and Planning Mill and was responsible for bringing large-scale paper manufacturing to Quincy in 1872. The old Quincy Paper Company, which became the most successful manufacturers of paper in the West due to Newcomb. At the time of his death in 1904, he was one of four millionaires in Quincy. He was instrumental in the development of the downtown business corner at 4th and Main, taking the lead in the construction of the Newcomb Hotel, acquiring land for the public library, and influencing the commercial construction on the corners of this intersection. Because of this, 4th and Main became known as Newcomb's Corner for quite some time. This Historic Quincy Business District podcast was produced by WGEM. Special thanks to the Gardner Denver Museum of Architecture and Design, the Historical Society of Quincy and Adams County, and Quincy Preserves for providing information. For more information, you can visit www.downtownquincy.com or walk to the HQBD office at 128 North 5th Street. I'm WGEM's Rich Kane.